And welcome, dear Chambra. We're here for this very special message from Adama St. Germain about the situation that's occurring right now with Ukraine, Russia, but it's really not just a Ukraine, Russia issue. It's something that's affecting the whole world right now. Adama uh, surprised both Linda and I just a few minutes ago and basically said he wanted to talk to Chambra, get the uh, recorder ready. Even though it's late afternoon here in Kona, we were just winding down for the day. It kind of surprised both of us. It did, and it didn't, in a way, because it's a very intense situation for many, many people. So here we are, about to start the recording, not knowing exactly where it's going. We're just going to dive in with some breathing with Linda, and then we're going to hear from Adamas. So with that, let's take the good deep breath really feeling into the energies and the message that's going to be here for us. Take the good deep breath. Let these distractions just go away and allow yourself to be present, breathing the I am here, I exist. Be with that deep breath of life. Breathe it in, feel it. Again, really opening to this message. Feel the energies of Adamus. He's here with every breath. Be with that good deep breath as we begin. I am that I am. Adamus of Sovereign Domain. Welcome everybody. And yes, indeed, I did call for this special session. And thank you to Caldra and Linda for being so accommodating. I'm going to be very clear, and I'll ask Caldra to be very open uh, and don't allow the distractions because there, there's a lot of, uh, would say, uh, outside energy right now bouncing around. So, dear Caldra, uh, be open, be very clear, and dear Linda, as you're sitting here with him, uh, be in a place of shining light, uh, radiating your light, first to Caldra, and then to uh, all Chambra in this gathering. It's my honor. The reason why I called for this was to be very, very clear with Chambra around the world that this is a very important time, both for the world and for each and every one of Chambra. We've come a long way together over these years, since the times of Tobias and, and now in the work we're doing, and we've come to this place of shining our light, being on the park bench. We've come to the culmination of so many of the, the years of teachings and sharing and tears and laughter. We come for the true work and the passion that you're here to do. You chose this time. You chose this time of machines. You chose this time of changes as well as turbulence on the planet. You chose to be here. You chose to be here to share your consciousness. I call it the light, but it's your consciousness. It's time for the world to move to a, a new level of consciousness. And it simply can't be done through ascended masters or <laughs> aliens, if you want to go that route, or any other beings. It has to be done through the humans, through you. There aren't many humans on the planet that truly understand what this means when we talk about shining a light and, and radiating your consciousness out to the planet. There are those who pray, those who wish and hope, those who hide their head in the sand, and many, many, many of those who take sides. This is not a time for Shambra to be taking sides, yet I know it is very seductive very, very seductive to want to take sides, to get into conspiracies, and to defend what you believe is your, your beliefs, defend your country, defend your, your concepts of right and wrong at this time. But it's not about that. If ever there was a time that we've been together over these years, a time to not get into duality, not get sink, sucked into... Uh, the sexual energy virus, not to get sucked into any of the other dynamics that are playing out right now, and in particular, the power dynamics. This is the time. 
This is the time when the planet needs it. This is the time for you to come out uh, and shine the light without agenda. Without agenda. We're not talking about winning or losing. It's simply shining a light so the world can see the greater potentials that they have. There is the potential right now for power, as this planet has known it for so very long, to come to an end. But it's at a very fragile, at a very delicate point, and it, it could tip one way or the other. It could tip back into more power games and ultimately more wars and more chaos on the planet for, for a time to come until a, a new occasion, a new point of separation is reached like we're at right now. It's so important for Chambra to look at not just what you see on the surface, not just what you read in the news and not just what you hear in social media. It's so important to look at all of the energy dynamics that are taking place, to look uh, underneath what lies beneath the surface of what's going on because there's so much right now that many Chambra, most Chambra simply don't understand. There's a situation right now. It is the power, uh, and, and I refer to that generically, but power, trying to exert its power, trying to maintain its stronghold on the planet. And power here is not represented by any one person or one country. It is simply power. Power, of course, as you know it, is an illusion. But power is stems from the belief that energy or other things are outside of you and that you have to take it from somewhere else or protect what you already have. And of course, as you, Shambar, know, that is simply not true. All the energy is yours. There is no need to amass power, nor wealth, nor, nor even defend what you do have because it is inherently yours. It is your right to your own energy and ultimately then your responsibility to let that energy serve you. What you see on the surface is what some would call a conflict, an invasion, a war. And again, let's not get into taking sides or defending anything or being righteous. You're going to get plenty bombarded with plenty of information about conspiracies. And these are things that simply are not true. Or if there is a small degree of truth, they've been, they've been expanded, they've been... They've been distorted in so many ways. Don't get sucked into the conspiracies that are going out around there. You simply won't be able to shine your light and do this planet an incredible service if you're involved in the conspiracies or taking sides. This is ultimately not about Ukraine or not about Russia. It's about the world and it's about power. There are some important things to understand in what's taking place. Now, I'm going to use names and I'm going to refer to countries, but ultimately, please understand that it is about power. Power is trying to hold on to the power. It can feel that it is losing its grip. It can feel that there's a, a change or at least a great potential on this planet to move away from the power bases, whether it's religions or governments or corporations. And therefore, it brings power to the center and the forefront right now. And it's being played out through individuals and through countries. But understand, at the core, what lies underneath is simply what I would call the, the last hurrah of power. It is trying to hold on to what it has and continue on with power. So now, let me get into what else is beneath the surface. I recently talked about President Putin and the fact that he is the reincarnation of St. Vladimir from Kiev, and that he comes back in this lifetime uh, wanting, wanting to regain the, the sacred site of Kiev and ultimately of uh, Ukraine for the sake of Russia, justifying it by saying that Ukraine is part of Russia, and it's neither here nor there. But he comes back, and he had an interesting. He has an interesting background as Saint Vladimir. He was a barbarian and a warrior, 
thought nothing of murdering hundreds or tens of thousands of, of people at a time until his conversion to Christianity. The conversion to Christianity was a political in part, but ultimately it touched his soul and his heart. And indeed, St. Vladimir studied all the religions before making his decision and ultimately decided on Christianity. Then, uh, in the baptism of the entire city of Kiev and ultimately of many, many throughout the lands, he became a saint. He became known as a saint. Now, when I say saint, that doesn't mean in the eyes of God or anybody else, but in the eyes of people. He, he received his, his sainthood. Now, as Putin, Vladimir Putin, he comes back. And an interesting thing is he comes back in a way to be a major player in the end or the potential end of power games on the planet and potentially the end of war. Will it work? With enough light, yes, it is a strong potential. But let me dive a little bit deeper into it. So you have this character. Uh, look at him that way. It's just a character in a big, in a big play. Playing a big game, uh, unknown even to himself as President Putin. He becomes an international bad guy for much of the world to loathe and to hate. But yet, also a reflection of power and abuse and heinous crimes. I would say that he actually took on this role. And whether it's the saint or the barbarian that comes through is yet to be determined and determined by the amount of non-agenda light that comes through. So let me explain it a little further. So Vladimir Putin comes into this lifetime with the, with the memories and, and the deep energies of Saint Vladimir. And he comes in to be either a saint or a villain. Oh, he's put himself in that interesting role, kind of, uh, kind of which way it will go. Not consciously knowing about it, but knowing that it could happen. Could he, as President Putin, with the actions that he's taking right now, and the focus of the world's attention on what's going on, could he actually assist in helping the end of the power games? In other words, if... Russia is not successful in overtaking Ukraine. They have to back down, and perhaps even something happens to Putin. Uh, the Russians back down and make peace with Ukraine. That sends a message out to the entire world. Perhaps it's time to stop these wars, to stop the aggression, to stop the power plays. So you could say that Putin put himself in that position of becoming the bad guy or ultimately facilitating the collapse of the old power basis on the planet. And it could go either way. Well, is he sitting in his office right now realizing this? Uh, absolutely not. But at a soul level, he knows that he has put himself uh, in the spotlight. And now it's up to the light and the consciousness of the planet to determine, do we let these power games persist? Does Russia end up... Uh, overtaking Ukraine and then go on to other countries? Or is there the line in the sand now based on human consciousness that we will not tolerate this anymore? So you see in a very interesting twist on the plot, Putin could actually become the hero in this, knowing that he's putting himself in the position to potentially be defeated, to potentially uh, go out of power and therefore ring the bell across the planet for the end of power and hopefully the end of war. Because, you see, if this doesn't work for Putin, then many other countries and dictatorships and uh, aggressive leaders, those wanting to take over other people and other countries, will realize that their game is up, that it simply won't work. Whether it's caused by overall general public reaction, whether it's caused by corporations 
and, and government squeezing the funds and, and doing things to cut off the, the trade and therefore harm the economies of this country, perhaps it will send out such a big signal to any other nation, to any other power source, that this simply won't be tolerated. This could trickle down to corporations, to oil companies, to armies, to other countries all around the world. The end of power as it's been known. So you see, there's a beautiful but yet dangerous game being played right now. And it's Putin either becoming the continuing as uh, Vladimir the Barbarian or Vladimir the Saint. And again, you can't point fingers at him. He's simply playing a role in all this. By the way, an interesting thing about the name Putin in, in Russian, it means the the put means the way or the load or the mission. Putin, when put together, uh, has an energetic name of rightful owner of the world or follower of the way. Which way is it going to be for Putin, but really for humanity? Is it going to be the way of the rightful owner of the world? In other words, uh, the old power game, the old control, and the lack of freedom, or is it going to be the follower of the way in terms of the way consciousness, the way enlightenment, the way the planet, I believe, truly wants to go? All of this is going to be determined in these coming days and weeks and months. The world is at an important crossroad. Putin is playing his role. Zelensky is playing his role as well. And that's not to say either good or bad, but he's playing his role coming from a non-power, non-political, non-military side. The world is watching to see if he can inspire his people and the world in this rebellion against power. Can he win or is winning even a word that should be used in this? Is it simply the shift in consciousness, the rebellion against power, Zelensky comes in playing this role, and can he then, with the world focus on him and the potential that Ukraine is not overtaken by Russia, can he resist the power temptations as well? As many of you know that it's one thing to talk about power when you don't have it, and it's totally a different thing when you do have it. And it's easy, easy to take on those power dynamics. And it's often encouraged by the very people right around you, the control, the power. Can Zelensky, Zelensky resist that as well? So we have these dynamics going on. It's a huge uh, stage, a huge theatrical event that's taking place on the planet with either potentially sad consequences or potentially potentially the end of the old power. That is why it is time right now for your light, without agenda, without getting into the conspiracies, without taking sides, whether it's Russian or Ukrainian, without taking sides whatsoever, and without burying your head in the sand and saying you just don't want to listen to any of the news going on. This is why you're here. You don't have to focus on the news every day. You don't have to immerse yourself deeply into it, but at least to know what's going on. It's not about hiding your head in the sand. You've done that in the past, and ultimately it hurts. Ultimately it hurts physically and emotionally because you know right now you have something to offer the planet. You know it's being called for. And knowing now that through this conflict, this uh, aggression that's taking place, it's really calling up whether it's time for power to end or not. Do humans want to continue on with it, with their old power games, and usually also involves war, or are they ready to bring this to an end? This could be an end to the power games that the planet has known for so very long, people simply not tolerating it. With all the world's attention right now focused on what's happening in this wonderful place of the world, but unfortunately going through its conflicts and its deaths and its battles, and 
with all this happening, there are many, many other things happening underneath the surface. Things that are literally going to assist in changing consciousness. There, there is a emergence of corporate consciousness right now. There are companies around the world who are willing to sacrifice bottom line profits, revenues, dollars, euros, or whatever it happens to be, are willing to sacrifice that in order to make a statement that they simply won't be involved in wars. One side or the other, they're simply not going to tolerate it, so they're pulling out of many places in Russia. And again, this is not an indictment on Russia. This is simply noting how, on a global basis, companies are taking conscious actions no longer looking the other way and continuing to take money and profits looking the other way as happened in world war ii as so many of you know companies simply profited from the war and now companies are saying no more we're drawing a line here we're going to pull out completely until some resolution has been reached you're seeing people all across the world now praying for peace knowing that this is a precarious time. You're seeing people around the world not trying to take sides, but yet calling for a global peace. I know it's difficult to do, and so many of you are tempted or have actually gotten involved in it. Whether you're Russian, whether you're Ukrainian, it doesn't matter. It is right now about being Shambra and doing what you came here to do to shine your light, to shine your light, particularly letting it flow to this huge power vortex. And that's all that this ultimately is. If you look beneath the surface, it's not Putin, it's not Zelensky, it's not Ukraine against Russia, it's not about oil, it's not about any of those things. It's not about these biological laboratories and all the other conspiracies. It's not about aliens right now. There was a time when Poland, in particular, was interfered with so much by, by the alien and angelic beings. And it caused tremendous wounds and suffering in this great land of Poland. But now even the aliens and uh, the nefarious angels cannot interfere. That changed a couple of years ago with the closing of the Order of the Ark no longer allowing any interference on earth that is up to the humans right now. So no more talk about the conspiracies. No more feeding into one side or the other. No more defending even your own country. I know it's your country, it's where you're born and raised, but you are no longer Russian or Ukrainian or Brazilian or American or English. You are Chambra, and it's time to rise up to the occasion. It's time to be clear about why you're here, and this is the most significant event we've had since we started benching. And here we are also in the Art of Benching series. This is the time right now to take to your park bench. Take a lot of deep breaths and let your light shine. Not trying to fix anything, not trying to change anything, but simply illuminating pure consciousness onto this planet so others may see the potentials those in government those in businesses those who have lost loved ones in this conflict those who are frightened when they go to bed at night to the young children who simply don't understand what's going on to all the people who fear the worst of what could happen on this planet, it's time right now to sit on the park bench and radiate your light. This is why you came here. Your light is a gift that this planet needs. Yes, your light. And I know so often you think, well, you barely have enough to manage your own life barely getting by, but watch what happens when you truly shine your light. You'll realize how much you have and what you have to offer. 
I call upon all Schomburg now to take to the park benches and to radiate your consciousness out onto the planet in the midst of this great and hopefully final battle of power. With that, I am Adamus of Sovereign Domain. And with that, please allow yourself to take the good deep breath and truly, truly be the radiant being that you are, each of us. Truly feeling out into the potential that this brings. Breathing and allowing that radiance, that radiance that is almost hard to imagine that we can do this, but we can. Be the radiance. Take the good deep breath. Take the good deep breath. And please, be that radiance, that true radiance, that life-changing, world-changing radiance with all that you are, each of us, each of us.